Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to our virtual town, small business town hall. I'm Dan McKee, Lieutenant Governor, and we're here every week uh, talking about the uh, important issues that we're facing in our small business community. And today's no different. Um, we certainly are coming up against deadlines that are important deadlines for the state, uh, business, small business community and the nonprofits. Uh, tonight at nine o'clock, those ways set right now, the Restore Rhode Island program, that's the deadline for the applications, for new applications. So if you haven't applied, if you're a business, there are a couple things that have changed that I've been told uh, we'll, we'll confirm during the call, but there are some changes that small businesses that opened up in 2020 are now eligible for the Restore Rhode Island program. Uh, and we got contact information there with Commerce, if anybody out there is in that category. Uh, we encourage you to do that before nine o'clock tonight. We're also hearing that uh, there has been a dropping of the restrictions for the DUN number, which has been very confusing. Uh, we'll confirm that, but, uh, but I had heard through uh, one of the small business coalition members yesterday, they received an email saying that the DUN number is no longer a requirement. And we know that uh, several, several businesses, dozens of businesses have been discouraged just by that simple uh, you know, uh, piece of information that they don't, they can't provide and they don't know how to really work their way through that. We can help you work your way through that, but at the moment, that's a change. Uh, but again, it's only good to nine o'clock tonight. So we've sent a letter to the governor uh, that should be going out if it hasn't already gone out, but the contents of the letter we'll share with, with everyone. And we've asked the governor to extend the Restore Rhode Island grant period to December 15th. So that coincides with what I'm told is the deadline uh, for the for the pause. So we're going to have to confirm that, uh, but uh, hopefully by the end of the program. But the content of the letter also says, let's do an accounting of all the dollars that have been appropriated for the small businesses from the CARES Act money. Those are the federal dollars that have been uh, allocated. The $1.25 billion have been allocated to the state in order for in the state. One of the allowable uses is to use that for grants for small businesses and now nonprofits. Um, so we're asking that the extension be made to December 15th and an accounting be done of all the dollars, all the funds that have been appropriated in the name of small businesses. Uh, back in July, it was, uh, you know, it was announced that the 50 million Restore Rhode Island grant pool was there, another 45 million for a job training program and then other dollars for techn technology help well, let's do an accounting right now because we are coming up with against the deadline of December 30th. And we really should know how much money has been allocated, but how much money has been spent. And then so what we're asking is that all the dollars that have gone unspent, that they get rolled into the Restore Rhode Island grant program. So even on the pause program, what's going to happen there is that is that whole $50 million going to be used? If not, let's roll the excess back into the Restore Rhode Island grant program so all small businesses can participated. If there was any competitive grants, which are, which again, I don't understand why we're having businesses compete against one another for, for these grants. Every business should be receiving these grants. But if there's dollars left from the competitive grants that have been put out there for small business, take those dollars and put them into the Restore Rhode Island program, increase that amount. And then also, as you increase that, get a second, third check to our small businesses and nonprofits that have already received one or two checks. That's going to be very important, and it's a quick, fast way to get that money into the hands of the small businesses and the nonprofits. And also, we've asked in the letter that we, we include the, the doctors and the dentists and, and the chiropractors and others who have not um, been included up to date. This will give another week for those businesses to qualify for these funds. And it, just taking the job training program is a great idea, but job training uh, is not going to fit uh, the, 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 the priority that we have in terms of saving our small businesses. So take all the excesses that have not been used, appropriated but not used, put it in the Restore Rhode Island program, and then do things like simplifying the application, like eliminating the need for the done number, create a real small application strategies for those who already received dollars, and let them get another check before Christmas. Uh, that will help buy the time that we need. So those are the type, some of the things. And then on the nursing homes, we need to really focus on these nursing homes. The virus, uh, the virus is exploding in the state. Uh, unfortunately, we're getting on the wrong side of the list of one of the top infection rates in the country. 
Um, so two things we're asking in the, in the letter we sent to the governor. One is that we really focus on our nursing homes. Right now, we are providing CARES Act money into the hospitals for the field hospitals to recruit personnel out of our nursing homes. This doesn't make any sense. If, if we have dollars to put monies to increase the pay of the CNAs and others in, at the field hospital, then take the CARES Act dollars and provide it to the nursing homes so that they can maintain and sustain their staffing levels, which they need uh, in order for us to address the, you know, the outbreaks and the, and the real uh, uh, you know, hot points and danger points that are in the state. And a lot of those are rated in our nursing homes. So let's double down on our nursing homes and get them the, the resources they have so that the staff can actually do to provide the services that we need right now. And also, I know that the, uh, the vaccine's coming and we should start advocating that the nursing homes, the people in the nursing homes and the people who are providing the services in the nursing home, they, 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 they rise to the top of the list in terms of the vaccinations. <clears throat> so then the third thing that we're asking for in the letter that we're sending to the governor today is to really rethink the strategy. If we're exploding with a, with a virus rate uh, that we are right now, then, the, then, then there's a real need to address the, behavior cha the behavioral changes that need to happen in all our communities, all 39 cities and towns and all the communities that make up our communities. So we're starting a focus group this Thursday uh, with Westerly, with their civic leaders and their elected leaders and their hospital and their healthcare people, and just really asking them one simple question. In your constituency, what are you recommending uh, to help change the behavior in your constituency? So we really, you know, really um, zero down on the, on the need to change behaviors to impact the infection rates in the state. That's something that hasn't been done. We need to do a bottom-up strategy, not a top-down strategy, as we've been using up to this date uh, in terms of um, helping uh, to change behaviors. And the only way you're going to do it is by by asking people how what they can do to in their constituencies to change these behaviors, so that we're doing the wear the mask, save a life, save a job, save a small business. So, and then finally, before we get into the program, I, I do kind of keep on, I keep on pounding this idea. This, this education piece is so important. Right now, hundreds of hours are being lost on education time. It's probably going to continue uh, for the rest of the school year uh, in, in some form, of, some form of, of, of virtual learning. Hundreds and hundreds of hours are being lost in learning time for our students in the state. And what does that mean? It doesn't. It impacts high income, low income, moderate income. It impacts people, young kids that are going to private schools, public schools, charter schools, mayoral academies, um, home schools to a to a to a large degree as well. So we need to come up with a strategy to fill in those hundreds of hours. We can't have lost our learning time. We can't expect our school districts with the work that they're doing and the unbelievable efforts that they're being put in by their staff and their teachers and their administration, their students and their families. Uh, we can't expect them to do more than they can do. And so these hours that are lost are going to impact the, the economy of, these, of the families and the students for generations, for, 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 for their lifetime, unless we address this. And it's going to have a negative impact on our economy in the state of Rhode Island for, for decades. And so this is why it's so important. I'm suggesting that we really take a hard look at what I did as a mayor in the town of Cumberland and create up create municipal education departments that run 52 weeks out of the year. Our Office for Children and Youth Learning now is operating and is beginning its 14th year uh, under the leadership of three mayors, myself, Mayor M Bill Murray and Mayor J Jeff Mutter. Um, and thousands of hours of learning time, 52 weeks out of the year on reading and math and, and science and art and music. Uh, <clears throat> that's happening right now in the town of Cumberland. That can happen in every community in the state and we can customize a municipal education office into the community's needs uh, and sub, you know, make it, make it uh, work for, the, for the, each community and each community can, can kind of um, manage that and then they can partner in with the schools that they, the schools are willing to partner in. But we gotta catch up on this time. Uh, so we're gonna keep on talking about this concept of a municipal education department to support our school districts uh, and, uh, and our other schools, whether they're private schools, like I said, public schools, charter schools, marital academies, it doesn't matter. All our students, high income, low income, moderate income, uh, in all 39 cities and towns, uh, this not, not in any one particular community, 
lost learning hours are going to impact the lives of the of the students and the families that are currently in our schools and it's going to have a long-term effect on our economic conditions in the state of Rhode Island that we want to lift up and not you know and then this challenge needs to be met in order for us all to make progress on our on, our, on the family incomes uh, throughout the state of Rhode Island. So with that uh, let's bring on Joe Rodeo and uh, and uh, first guest. I think Matt is with us. I'm not sure. Ben, the order, but help us bring on our, our guest that we have on uh, regularly. Oh, we got Mark Awin, and we got the we got the mask there. And of course, I don't have my mask at this station. So Mark, we have no Joe Rodeo I'm already. Going, no, no, I'm going to get a mask right now. Liz Tanner will not so, be happy with me. So, so Governor, Mark, I have a new welcome. one. This is a new mask. Yeah, and I'm getting that interference again. I don't understand why I'm getting interference. Anyways, thank you for wearing the mask, Mark. Why don't you tell everybody what's happening if there's any updates? I can get the mask. I'll be right back. But the floor is so, yours. Thank you very much, Governor. Appreciate it. It's always a pleasure to be here on Tuesdays. I, there's no other place I'd rather be. Um, it really is interesting because we're getting a lot of questions from the people who have gotten the, um, the PPP loans as well as the EIDL loans particularly on PPP. What do we do now that uh, we're coming to the end of the COVID period and, and how do we move forward? Well, the question that we got uh, a couple of times today, by the way, this is my other mask that I wear. Um, the, the question that we got today is I have ceased operations. So having ceased operations, um, am I still eligible for forgiveness? And the answer to that is yes. Uh, that's why, Governor, we always tell everybody, please keep good records. It's very important to keep good records um, because even if you have ceased operations, doesn't mean that you've closed completely, um, but you've ceased operations for a period of time, you are still eligible to uh, go back to your lender and to request forgiveness. So that's really important. And unfortunately, we have seen a number of bankruptcies. And the question has come to us from a couple of companies that have um, uh, basically gone out of business. How, where do I stand now that I had a PPP loan and how do I move forward? The same applies to you. Um, if you have kept good records, uh, you can go back to the lender and you can ask for forgiveness for that particular loan. And we would encourage you to do so. If you have any questions, uh, Ben, if you could put the Rhode Island DO um, uh, email address up there, please you know, contact us at the Rhode Island District Office, Rhode Island underscore DO at SBA.gov, and we will help you work through that uh, particular situation. On the other side of it, I know there's a lot of anxious people. Governor, you, you and I both know that there is a need for liquidity into the small business community now. Um, I do know that the Senate is uh, continuing to have discussions with the House and amongst themselves, and I think everybody is hopeful that at some point in time in the near future, we will get some additional assistance. Uh, uh, there may be some caveats to that. So we're going to look at it and we're going to we're going to see what it is. Um, I did talk to a couple of friends in Washington that said, uh, how, when when will you be able to take applications should the Congress pass this and the president sign? And they basically said, we're going to need a few days to do the tweaks and then to put the system back up and running. So that's where we're at, Governor. Yeah, thanks, Mark. And and I think you may have heard my entry about a letter that we have sent to the governor. I have. I do a full accounting. That's what we're going to suggest uh, is a full account, you know, accounting of the dollars that have been appropriated to help the small businesses and have those dollars that have not been used, roll those into the Restore Rhode Island, extend that to December 15th and get, uh, you know, additional checks to the small businesses that are already received them. Getting getting uh, liquidity to the small business community, particularly the ones that I continue to mention, the retail, the hospitality, the hoteliers, and the gyms, uh, the people who do physical fitness and fitness uh, and spas, they are really in dire need of getting assistance. Yes. You know, we understand we want to keep safe and we want to do the right things, but on the other hand, um, we cannot afford to allow these businesses to just close their doors, put the keys in the door, and walk away. We need to keep them up and running. Yes, and this is, uh, you know, there's dollars available, Mark. I haven't seen anything that leads me to believe that you can carry these dollars over uh, in the, on the CARES Act, but I'm being told that the, uh, that the, the you know, the governor is making the, the argument that they can be, and I haven't seen that. If they can be, let's find out because that'll change strategies. But right now, what we know is the dollars need to be expended by December 30th. That's, that's what I've read. There are some auditing carryovers, but 
but in general, those dollars need to be expended. So, um, yeah, I, I, you know, Governor, we had a couple of questions today because there were there were needs for tweaks on uh, loans that request forgiveness. For example, uh, one particular individual got a loan of twenty thousand three hundred. And eighty-two dollars, but yet when it was put in the system, it was twenty thousand three hundred, and there was a question about that eighty-two dollars and what to do. And here is the situation, as we were told by our office of congressional affairs. Uh, the, in that in that case, the legislation had lapsed because PPP was no longer in effect after August the eighth. There's nothing that we can do to change that. So I always get concerned when legislation has definitive deadlines. And um, I think that's one of the things that you're trying to, you know, put out to everybody. Hey, listen, you know, we're looking at a December 30th, 31st deadline and we need to be be able to react. Yeah, my understanding that auditing strategies uh, into those funds of this cost that are carried over, those can be covered. And also if there was some like correctable errors, as you just talked about there, you know, in right. the CARES Act, that money may have been appropriated uh, in, in, a, in a way that you need to rethink it or whatever it is. But uh, but in general, I'm hearing the money's got to be used. And then and then what we're seeing is, Mark, is that, um, you know, there was $45 million appropriated to job training. Well, that's all well and good. But those dollars have not been expended. The majority of those dollars, in my, my understanding, have not been expended. If, they, if those dollars have not been expended, let's roll it in back into the Restore Rhode Island program. Let's get another check to those restaurants. Let's another get a check to those gyms. Uh, let's get the money out to them. And then the last thing on the pause, which I'll mention here for you and others, so is that we did get corrected for the businesses that weren't restaurants that they can do 4% of the gross receipts to as a qualifiable. It took a business that was on last week, a fitness center from $500 to $28,000. That's a real improvement. What we're hearing now is the restaurants want to have the same flexibility either to use their, uh, uh, you know, the taxable revenue or the loss of revenue or their gross receipts. Uh, and right now they're not allowed to use their gross receipts. And it's kind of a spelt and suspender we're hearing that the reason is that it's, again, it's about compliance and it's about, you know, worrying about businesses not providing the right information. These guys are not, you know, they didn't, they didn't, uh, they didn't create the crime. They didn't, you know, they weren't the people who actually uh, right. did the crime. They, they're the victims. We, we, we need to have a lot more flexibility, especially as we're coming up to this deadline. Yeah, no, qu no question about that, Governor. And, and you know, you, you mentioned a couple of times about the need for, for money into the hands of the small business. I, I can tell you that we are getting calls on a regular basis, people saying, hey, listen, you know, I, know, I understand where everybody is at at this point in time, but I need to get additional grant funds in order for us to stay open and stay continuation. I mean, I heard from a very large prominent restaurant this morning that just threw their hands up and said, we can't go any further. Yeah, and, and I, and I think that's a problem. And, and we, we need to, we need to be able to say, okay, we want you to stay open. We understand that there are some challenges here, but in order to do that here, here are some additional funds that would, would get you to that point. And on the issue of the Dunn's number, you know, I, I, I was a little bit taken aback because normally Dunn's numbers are only used in government contracting, um, particularly federal government contracting. That's that's one thing that we use. So uh, I'm not sure what the purpose is of the Dunn's number, but I think we need to simplify it and make it as easy as possible. And then hopefully uh, the most important thing right now is to get funds in the hands of small businesses to keep them up and running. Mark, what I heard yesterday with one of the small businesses that was on our coalition call that we have every Monday at 11 o'clock was that he got an email saying we don't need the done number any longer. But we yeah. only had that's only like 36 hour notice that you don't need the done number. I can tell you that we're working with dozens of businesses that that there's been a, a detriment for them to apply and they kind of like throw up their hands. But now we're making that change. That's why I'm asking that we extend to December 15th last week. We heard that businesses that opened up in 2020 are going to qualify for the Restore Rhode Island. We've been asking that for months. And Somebody just uh, put in the uh, comment section here that um, uh, it's Chris Parisi that said the Dumbs number is still needed. Uh, it was a miscommunication from okay. Commerce to RI in an email. So Thank you. Thank you for that, Mark. Thank you for that, Chris. So anyways, simplifying it, I still believe that you don't need it for, for grants that are less than 50000 based on the guidelines that I've seen. But uh, but again, simplify it, get money into these pockets. 
of the pockets of our small business and our nonprofits that are serving our small businesses, which include the chambers. Yeah, very, very, very important. The other thing I want to switch kind of um, uh, focus right now, Governor, and talk about Idle for a second. Um, I did have a number of discussions with people who are victims of fraud. And, and again, I would encourage people go back into your um, credit reports and make sure that uh, you haven't had a hit on your credit report that says that you applied for a loan that you actually did not. We continue to coordinate with the Rhode Island State Police. Uh, there was a lot of coalition. Um, Matt, who Matt is just absolutely phenomenal. There's no question about that. Um, but we coordinate with both uh, DLT and the Rhode Island State Police. And we're finding, again, when you find a fraudulent unemployment claim, you're finding some uh, idle fraud as well. Um, we want people to make, make sure that they're not um, responsible for those loans and to take them off the books as quickly as possible. And if they tell, uh, if they report it to us, we'll give them the information as to where they have to report it so that they're not obligated to uh, to repay those loans because they are, I mean, it's a huge issue right now. Uh, we're only, we're also finding governor, um, since the list has been posted on WPRI, there have been a number of businesses actually uh, who had people go in and apply for idle loans under either the DBAs or other names. And we're kind of astounded. I mean, but the fraud uh, continues. And and this is, we're talking about idle, not PPP. But they looked at the name of the business and then went into idle and applied for a loan. Uh, a couple of people that you and I know very well, uh, this happened to, and I just said, go back in, go back, you know, we'll go back to the Office of the Disaster Assistance and make sure that you're not responsible for that particular loan. Just a you know, word of caution, Governor. Yeah, thanks for that. And thank you so much, Mark. Wear your mask. Yeah. Governor, you like my new mask. Well, you know, they, you know they're on a roll now, so I can see why you're taking it out. So, um, yeah, this was uh, this was a new one that was sent by the uh, New England Patriots. And after, I figure, af after that huge win uh, last week, I, like it. Um, I thought, then well, maybe you got a question that one. for uh, Mark. I do. Uh, what are the credit score minimums? And if you're a business, why does a credit score matter if I'm an LLC or INC? Well, it is. it does matter because um, there are certain things that you have to do in order to be able to qualify. Uh, on, on minimums, uh, I would suggest that if you have uh, a score that's less than 600, it could be problematic. Um, and, and if you uh, are above 600, I don't think it would be problematic at all. But we would, if, if you have issues as it relates to credit and credit scores, give us a call. Uh, we'll, we'll be happy to walk you through it. Um, they do not tell us, you know, hey, 500 and, and above were approving. I think it's a moving target all the time. So um, particularly for, uh, we're talking about idle now because PPP is not existing. So just FYI. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, we'll Governor. Touch. We'll be in Always touch. With pleasure. Thank you. I'll be reaching out to you because we're going to craft this letter to the to our congressional leaders right now. Matt, welcome aboard. Uh, yes, thank you very much for wearing the mask. Very important. We uh, get that message out and that behavior really, uh, you know, we have a behavioral shift in the state, uh, especially with this infection rate. But thank you for all your work. And I'm sure you've been busy with the pause and give us an update of what, what you can share. Yeah, we've been busy, Governor. I mean, there's two big things I think I want to share, and I'll just touch quickly on the fraud piece that Mark just mentioned. Um, you know, we, we've put a lot of uh, different tools in place to limit the amount of fraud that's happening, to stop the claims very early. It's almost impossible to stop a claim from coming in if somebody has your information, but we can scrape the claim data and know quickly using artificial intelligence and other tools uh, if it looks like it's fraudulent. And if, we, if it is, we stop it. Um, in the event that it's not, as soon as it gets stopped, the claimant gets an email and it tells them how to lift it. And so if it's a legitimate claim, they have a remedy. They can follow that. It's a dedicated line that's separate from our call center. There's also a web tool they can use. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, just yeah. be diligent. Check your credit. Make sure that you know. I received this letter in the mail this week. It says that I've applied benefits. What do I do? Well, that's not good. That's not uh, good. <laughs> I'll have to make sure a, that a buy number uh, to uh, yeah. go online and collect. So uh, 
I guess so, I gotta follow that up, but that's the type of things you're talking about. Well, we can we can take care of that one for you, and I'll make sure your team has the information they need. But it's unfortunate. But what happens is once your information is out, it, people use it to do bad things, and like Mark said, make keep an eye on your credit because they use it to try to open different loans and do different things. Um, let's just be diligent about it. Yeah, I, my uh, my information evidently got compromised when they had that big, uh, you know, I can't, was it was I can't remember the company, but they had a big target, had a big one. It was a big, one. yeah, and and evidently I got uh, I got whacked because I we, we worked on a on a small uh, line of credit that was taken out in my name, and it took me two years to get it off. And uh, Mark was just talking about the credit rating ratings, and it impacted my credit rating significantly, and. Once I got it off, my credit rating went up by about 20, you know, twenty percent. So, it's oh. a big, big thing to to be on top of. So, thanks for mentioning that. Matt. And the internet has been such an incredible resource for all of us for a while now. But unfortunately, things go to the internet and live for a very long time, if not forever. And so, people are able to go dig around and find things and use it for bad purposes. So, keep so an eye on your credit, everyone. To tell us about the, you know, you you mentioned last week we had about seventy thousand people on unemployment and wonder whether that get that spiked at all because of the pause. I was curious on that. And what do people do if they are impacted, you know, uh, you know, staff and employees that are impacted by the pause, what do they do if they haven't already done it? Sure. So our certifications this week, we're only up a little bit, uh, a few thousand, although they have, people have all week to request a payment. You know, I think what people get confused about is when you're on unemployment, you need to keep that claim active, which means you need to request a payment every week and then if you go more than four weeks without requesting a payment it goes dormant to wake it back up you have two options either refile the claim online it's not the full application once you go in some things will be auto populated uh, because you still have an active claim that wakes the claim back up and then you can certify again or you call our call center at 415-6772 now a number of people didn't do either one of those things and i you know i understand they just didn't know what to do they try to certify and it doesn't work. It tell, it'll give a message saying that their social security number can't be found. That's because when you certify, it's paying out of a, a live file. If your claim is dormant, it's not in the live file. And so everyone, please call that number if you need help. Or if you've been out for more than four weeks, go to DLT's website and refile a claim. One of the things I wanted to talk about today is we just introduced a new landing page for refiling claims. Because we're running a federal program and the state program, it's confusing. People don't know which one to use. So we were able to rush through and create a single landing page with very little data, two or three questions. It'll send you to the appropriate claim that you have to refile. And there are some questions on there. So people, please be patient with them. One of them talks about a lot of COVID reasons. Those are the federal government's reasons for a federal claim. You need to pick the one that would apply. So you just take a minute. Take a look at it and it will shoot you to the right page. So you, there's no guesswork for the claimant, which is great. So please go in and use that at DLT's website that it was just listed up on the screen or call the call center. Call center helped about 1600 individuals yesterday. Very, very busy. Um, I expect the certifications to go up over the week. We don't know how many we'll get to. Uh, we think we might get closer to 90,000 by the end of the week. Um, the other thing is, Governor, we started paying the extra $200 that we spoke about last week. That went out to everyone who's requested a payment so far has gotten that 200. It's coming in a separate deposit because it gets paid from a separate bank account, a state bank account, <sighs> the usual federal account we use. Yep. So because of that, people may not see it come with their regular payment. It may come later that day, the next day. What we're saying is be patient, let it go through the end of the week. If you don't have it by Friday, give us a call, but you should definitely have it by then. People I've interacted with have all said that they've gotten it. It came right after the first payment. Uh, which is good. There'll be one more of those next week with the payment that comes out. Yeah. So people, um, uh, Matt, that say are, are, are slow to apply for the unemployment, are those two hundred dollars retroactive, or is, you know, are, are they defined by a time time frame? Well, it's payable for two weeks, so it's payable for we do uh, unemployment at on the end of a week, so it's December fifth and December twelfth. So that's the end of the week. So it's for the two week pause, basically. Okay. If you get it before the end of the year and you come in and say, oh, I should have been paid for those weeks for whatever reason, we'll get you that $200. Okay. If it's after the end of the year, it's CARES Act money, so we don't think we're going to be able to pay it out any further. Yes. Yeah, I think that's an important point. Matt, Ben, you got a question for Matt? Besides besides Hi. the fact that he is he's our most consistent mask wearer. I'm going to tell you that right now. 
So you get two <laughs> thumbs up for that, Matt. Thank you. That's right, Liz. <laughs> That's right. Matt, can you speak on what will happen at the end of the year for tax purposes? Will we receive a W-9 or something similar? For all unemployment claimants, we'll get a 1099 in January. Uh, that will indicate what happened with their taxes. Unemployment claimants have the ability to have taxes withheld during their weekly claim. They also have the ability to say, no, thank you. I'll just take care of it later. Uh, whatever they elected to do, it was up to them. The documentation they need to file with their taxes will be sent to them in January, at the end of January. And how does the second extension work? You need to reapply, then what? Yes. So the 13-week first federal extension is automatic as long as you lived in Rhode Island and worked in Rhode Island. Otherwise, you would need to reapply using that single landing page that we developed. Uh, the second extension is also something that you need to reapply for. It is not automatic at this time. We are working to make it automatic. I hope to tell you at some point it is, but right now the federal government says people have to request it. So there, you go in, refile the claim, and it will put you on the final extension. Great. And one final question. Does WorkShare extend beyond 1231-20? WorkShare is a permanent program in Rhode Island. It extends indefinitely. The funding for WorkShare only goes until the 1226. Uh, if they continue that with whatever action they're taking in Washington, then we'll hopefully keep seeing a number of employers engage, keep people connected to their employer. Uh, if they don't, we'll still have WorkShare, but it will be billed just like regular unemployment is billed to employers. Yeah, that's good information. Matt, and hopefully they extend that. But uh, if they don't, then we're back to normal. But still, it's a good program. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, so and we're hoping that, uh, you know, we're able to restore some of that uh, unemployment fund with some of the CARES Act money. Hopefully that's going to happen. I haven't heard definitively, but I heard that that's under consideration, which is going to help us as well. Matt, thank you so much. I want to tell you that I am partial to the, uh, you know, to the uh, the people who are working on our municipalities and the state have been a former mayor. And I uh, I always, uh, you know, applaud the uh, the efforts of our of our staff, and so again, uh, it, it, it you know I want to make sure that I take every opportunity to thank you, staff. Thank you for your leadership, and uh, you're helping thousands and thousands of people during a very difficult time, and you're you know you're helping people through uh, you know an emotional time as well, not only a financial one. So thank you so much, and please project my uh, my thanks to the staff as well. Thank you. We absolutely do. Thank you. Yep. You bet. Thanks, Matt. Oh, Liz, I'm telling you. Beautiful. We just need to put you on the road. I'm telling you, you will change one? the behavior in this state of Rhode Island all by yourself. We just got to give you that platform. You know, I got this at, uh, Matt will appreciate this. I got this at the Coffee Depot in Warren. It's sold by uh, Adria's Universe. Looks like she's making them herself. It's a beautiful mask. It's appropriate for the entire holiday season. Highly recommend it. Yes, thank you. And I'm uh, I'm switching my uh, phone because I'm still getting the crackling on my phone. So hold on a second. Now I just got to figure out how to shut off the phone and convert it over to this other format. I got to be very versatile. So hopefully I'm going to be okay with it. Liz, welcome. And thank you so much for taking my call last week. We have that you know, that monthly call to compare notes on what's happening with our the business community. And thanks for doing that. No problem. Of course, I'm impressed with how quickly you're able to figure out that technology. That's something. Uh, well, I had it on standby and now I'm hoping that I don't get the crackling that I've been getting on my phone and on my, my uh, uh, tablet. And now I'm on to a, a Chromebook. So we'll, we'll see. I got this, <laughs> I got this Chromebook as a, as a, as a, as a throw in when I changed my, um, cable service two years ago. So that was pretty good. Nice. Yes. So well, tell us what's happening. Yeah, tell so us. So I haven't been on in a while. And the reason is, is it's game time, right? I mean, we are in the thick of it. You know, this is what we have been preparing for, for months and months and months. You know, all of the buildup and the inspections and the work that the businesses have done is resulting in some of the highest compliance numbers we've ever seen from our businesses. They're doing such a great job. And Thank goodness. Thank goodness we did what we did what we did because now you're really seeing it come together, right? So we are very happy that we still have people going out to our restaurants and going shopping for the holiday season and enjoying themselves despite what is going on um, outside of us. But it's game time now and we can't thank them enough for everything that they've done. So um, we're really pleased to see it. Unfortunately, we are still getting plenty of complaints 
uh, probably up to about a thousand a week that we're getting. And each one of those is looked at to analyze uh, whether we need to do an inspection or we make some phone calls or you know whatever we need to do. But we're getting about a thousand uh, complaints and inquiries per week asking us to check on you know this business because none of the employees are wearing a mask or they don't know where to go to deal with um, uh, positive employees, right? So we're getting all sorts of stuff. Um, so hopefully Shay will put that up on the screen to either call the tip line or to fill out the form to ask us those questions because we're dealing with them all day, every day, weekends, night times. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're handling it all. I will say the one thing that we really are enforcing heavily now is the face mask issue, right? That being the most important thing. Uh, we are issuing tickets to employees who are not wearing masks and who are not wearing masks properly because that is absolutely the biggest complaint that we're getting. So that's uh, the one thing that we're really going down heavily upon. Otherwise, like I said, businesses are doing such a great job, totally amazing, trying so hard, and we are extremely grateful. It is, it is a, just a, a rare scenario where you've got businesses that are doing the wrong thing, and we're right on top of it because you, you've told us and we, we know which ones that we should be paying attention to. Um, but it's game time, right? So now's the time to really focus, try to double down your efforts, make sure that uh, your employees are safe, that you are safe, as well as making sure your customers are safe. So, so just making sure everybody knows that. And if they have any questions whatsoever, they're not, they don't know where to turn, even if it has nothing to do with what you think EBR does, just ask us. We'll figure it out. We'll, we'll shoot you direction to the right, excuse me, to the right place. So that's what we got going on this time. Yeah, Liz. So, um, you know, uh, we're go as I think I mentioned to you, I'm still going to do these, um, these focus groups. I'm going to start in Westerly, actually, this week uh, with a broad group of community-based leaders, civic leaders. And uh, we want to, yeah, this is one of the sessions that we're going to have in Westerly. And, um, and we're going to start doing those. So, you know, I'm going to be bringing the messages that you deliver into those meetings. But the primary thing I'm going to be asking is, all right, in your constituent groups, uh, what can you – what can you do to impact the behavior of the people in your constituent groups? That's what I'm, that's what I'm going to be asking. It's going to be interesting to see the answers and we'll, we'll share that back with everybody as, as we start talking to some people who have, you know, uh, certainly supportive of, of what's going on, but they really have not been asked to really uh, generate the, um, the, the, the behavioral changes that we really need to uh, address. Right. So, but uh, hopefully we do, you know, we kind of do a more of a bottom up strategy and we'll see how that works. But we'll we'll be back reporting on that, whether that whether that helped or not. We'll, we'll see. But uh, but but yeah, but we'll be generating information that you're providing along with the DLT along, you know, continually not only making it a OK, what can what what are you suggesting we can do to change behavior and what role can you play? But we also want to use as an opportunity to exchange information that you're providing, that DLT is providing, that commerce is providing and on and on. So let us know if there's any messages you want to deliver besides the one you just did, but it's game time. That's the message today, right? It's game time. And uh, I think I was on last time when I talked about, you know, by all accounts, when you're doing the job, whatever your job is in your establishment, everybody's following the rules and they're doing a really good job at it. You know, it's pretty rare that they're breaking the rules there. It's when you let your guard down, right? It's, it's the smoke break, the dunk and run, you know, the, 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 I just happened to talk to somebody and I pulled my mask down and we were in a small room together. That seems to really be, you know, just regular human behavior. Behavior. People aren't perfect, but that virus is there 100% of the time, not just that 1%, right? So, you know, so that's that's what we're dealing with is, is regular human behavior. So, you know, the ask is to be vigilant, keep your mask on at all times as best you can and and recognize that everybody's doing their, their best to make this great. Um, but it's all individual. You've got to take care of yourself. You've got to do the right thing all the time, not just 99% of the time. You have to do the right thing 100% of the time. Yeah, that's what I'm reading. It's all about behavior right now. You know, you put all the, you know, all the framework in, Liz, and the hard work that your staff's been doing yourself. So the framework is there, but now it's now it's about strategizing on you really penetrating the behavior, right? The, be the behavior in areas where, um, you know, are in those in those social settings, in those those family settings, in the, the 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 football stuff that's going on, watching the game. It's in the behavior, and that's what we really need to kind of zero down in. But thanks for all your help, Ben. You got a question at all for Liz? I do. Uh, I have a couple questions for Liz. Liz, 
Uh, I own a bar. My interpretation of the guidance is that I am able to continue operating because I removed all bar seating and we are serving people at tables. That is correct. That is correct. Just the bar areas where there, uh, people are kind of gathered and hovered around and some people come and get their drinks. If you're sitting at a table, you can still do bar service, uh, deliver back and forth. That's correct. Um, that is a question for grants. Uh, where can employees find out information about the guidelines re uh, regarding their salary payments with employees that are in quarantine? So that probably would have been a question for Matt. Yeah. I'm not sure if Matt's still on, that he could answer that. If not, we can probably get that from him and get that out. Um, yeah. Anybody that has questions that were not able to be answered today, please just send an email over to ltgov20 at gmail.com. And uh, the Lieutenant Governor's staff will hook you up with whoever can answer your question. Definitely. Thanks, Liz. We'll see thank you, you very next much. Week. Thank you so much. Thanks for your leadership and thank your staff again for us. Uh, the, the very important work that's being done. The only thing I'll say is wait till you see my next mask. I'm very <laughs> ready for the holidays. Well, I'm glad because we got to get into the holiday spirit, Liz. So that's a good thing to do. So I'm, I can't wait till next week, the next time that Liz comes on. Uh, again, call her office, call our office, you know, our number 222-2371. Uh, we can help direct you into these offices. I know that I got an email today that somebody was having trouble getting to one of the offices. Well, uh, use our office, uh, and we can get you in directly as well, as well as going directly to to uh, the different um, you know offices that you need assistance from. Bring on the coalition. What we got of the coalition on today? I think that, that uh, there's a report to be given by Chris, and um, thank you, Chris. Oh my God! Now you know. I'm seeing now six and six. I'm seeing a lot more Patriot, uh, you know, uh, Patriot type of paraphernalia coming out. You never know. They could run the table and, uh, and then Belichick could be meeting Brady in the finals. I don't know. We'll see. That would be amazing. That would be great. So, yeah, you never know. You never know. Um, so, Lieutenant Governor, I do have a few things from the coalition. And I'll be brief because we I know we have a great – panel yep. of small businesses coming on next. So we want to give them, uh, you know, their due time. But uh, kind of like Liz was saying, like everyone was saying, time is of the essence here. And, and we're simply running out of time. Uh, we're running out of time when it comes to getting these COVID funds dispersed by December 30th that you alluded to. And we're running out of time for small businesses. Every day we're reading on social media or in the newspapers of more of these small businesses that we love are being shut down. And it's just really frightening. Uh, a lot of the small businesses that reach out to the coalition are expressing this frustration and fear that they just simply are running out of time. So uh, with your office, we're trying to think of creative solutions of how we can get cash into the hands of small businesses right away. And you talked about one of those solutions, right? Pool all this available money that's been allocated to small businesses with all of these programs since the Corona relief funds have been available and pull it together and send checks out. Just be simple about it and get cash into the hands of small businesses, especially that those are greatly affected. Whether we do it through the Restore RI grant program or simply just do it through a state department, right? Taxation have, has done it with the pause grants. Uh, other departments have done it. Maybe we can talk to the treasurer's office, see where they've been with during this whole crisis and if they could help out. But we need to get cash into the hands of small businesses swiftly. So that's a big thing. But another thing is this pause grant program, you know, we're just communicating what the members are telling us. And for restaurants, it's still not working. It's based on sales tax from September 2020. So we're giving them money based on September 2020. Obviously, it wasn't great month, September 2020, during the pandemic. We should have based it on November 2019. That would make more sense so that we can pay these fixed expenses. Our revenues went down in September 2020, but our fixed expenses remain the same. Rent didn't magically just lower for all these businesses, insurance, and all these fixed expenses. So what we're asking is to just like they re listened and revised it for non-restaurants, making it 4% of gross receipts. Well, we're asking to make it on at least November 2019 for restaurants. Um, 
And another part, and, and just a quick note is also for travel agencies. Uh, one of our members mentioned that they weren't even able to count revenue outside the state, but yet they're taxed for revenue, whether it's outside the state or not. Um, another thing, Lieutenant Governor, is that, you know, a lot of these businesses are being very vocal, especially the gyms, fitness centers, and rec centers about being shut down, whether it's based on data. Allegedly, the court that recently had the, uh, the gym shut down was based on a data from March 2020 in Korea? I mean, you kidding me? We have to base it on real facts, real data, and this is a health crisis. So why would we be shutting down ways to be healthy physically and mentally? So we really got to revisit why we are shutting down. Let's look at the data. All of the members that reached out to us due to contact tracing says it's been zero cases that's been contact traced back to their gym. So let's make sure that we're basing it on data. And what we're hearing from them is keep us open, let us be safe. As Liz just alluded to, a lot of these businesses are following the rules. It's more controlled in businesses than when you're in these informal gatherings, as, as uh, we mentioned, the eye. So let's, let's give our businesses the benefit of the doubt. Let them run their business safely and, and successfully. Um, but we're, we're looking for other ways. We're going to reach out to the General Assembly again. We know we have some members that are willing to work with us. Right now, you know, the governor is, it's a unilateral decision. She's the one that's in charge of the health crisis, the economic crisis, and it's obviously not working just looking at the numbers. So we need to do a different approach when it comes to the health crisis. But from the coalition standpoint, we need to do a different approach when it comes to the economic crisis as well. Thanks, Chris. And uh, as I said, we've got a letter out, as we mentioned on yesterday's call to the governor. The time is so uh, sensitive right now. It's all time sensitive issues. So we put a lot of general uh, terms in a very short letter. But we hit all the points that you just talked about, including extending uh, the, you know, the restore to December 15th uh, and, and, and then pooling the money. It doesn't matter to me if you pull it in the pause and change the pause strategy, you know, to open up to every business. Uh, or, or roll the pause into the uh, into the restore Rhode Island. But you got to make it simple, got to make it quick. And there are millions and millions of dollars that are available that are going unused at the moment uh, in programs that were uh, assigned uh, to help the small businesses. Where's this money going to go? You know, where's yeah, this money going to go that's being unused? We have so many unanswered questions and it's December 8th. Yes. So, anyways, Mark, you got a minute. Sorry about that because I got to get to these other businesses, but go ahead. That's fine. Want to say something. Don't tell me about the stick, though. I don't want to hear about the stick. Oh, I cleaned up. I cleaned up that comment. Okay, uh, good. <laughs> uh, you know, all these grant programs are like a cruel game of fetch. The government holds up a stick, and they toss it out, and they tell us to go fetch, and we run there, and there's no stick. So, frankly, you know, we've gone through a bunch of these programs. The uh, Restore Rhode Island program has been redesigned numerous times. The last time they redesigned it, they said that if you already got a grant, you're qualified to double that grant. And Commerce never sent out checks to all the people that got the original grant. The two week uh, money for restaurants and other businesses that did the shut, that reduced their hours, I filed applications for a whole bunch of restaurants they were approved for the minimum $10,000. Two weeks later, nobody's gotten a check. So I don't know where that money is. The pause grant is the most ridiculous. You know, restaurants were, well, businesses completely were held to 2% of their net taxable income. Well, if you're in the, 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 the COVID crisis, pretty much you don't have taxable income. You got a net loss. So 4% of a net loss is nothing. Um, so they revised that to help certain businesses, but restaurants were still stuck with using 20, uh, September 2020 data. And, and frankly, you know, the governor already made them reduce their hours, take their capacity from 100% down to 33%. Um, your, taxable, your, your, your taxable income is, is negligible at that particular point in time. Um, we have not gotten the lion's share of the money that was initially promised by the governor. Now, the governor put out 
tranches of grant money. You know, the two week reduced hours, it was 500 to 50,000. I would venture a bet that not even $5 million of that's been given out. The $50 million for the Restore Rhode Island, they're still not at $50 million being dispersed. I don't know what they intend to do with this money, but they're not giving it to small businesses. And Chris is right. All you have to do is watch social media, read the paper, and you can see the list of businesses that are just going out a business, no fault of their own. So we have an equal the four hundred million dollars that New Hampshire gave out to their small businesses, or the three hundred and seventy million dollars that Vermont gave out to their small businesses. We can't even give fifty million dollars away, and this is just a god awful shame. Yeah. So, Mark, I, you know, I appreciate your le your leadership over the years, and then stepping up during this really uh, extraordinary time, and then. You know, with Chris and others, because this is this messaging is very important. I took our meeting uh, yesterday, converted it into a letter. The governor does have that letter and ex expresses exactly that: simplify and pool the dollars and get cash into the pockets of these businesses. There is an easy way to do it, uh, and hopefully, they take that path. But your advocacy has been very important. And uh, let's get to the businesses on the call because the, you know their personal stories on this are so critical. Uh, but thank you, Chris, and thank you, Mark. Well, Appreciate one other it. thing before I leave. Yes. Chris, Chris and I have already discussed this, and based upon the newspaper article that mentioned you the other day, mm -hmm. the coalition will be taking up a collection so we can buy you a uniform. <laughs> I can't wait to see what's on the uniform, Mark. I, I, you're, you are definitely a, a master at uh, a communication and messaging, so I'll hold my breath. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Thanks, thank Chris. You. All right, I, I'm not sure we got uh, we got uh, Senator Josh Miller, we got uh, Senator uh, and Senator Conte who we work with Gribs Allergy. Uh, we certainly we've got uh, Steve Capazone who's oh, a, a, a long mind in the health club business, uh, and uh, I don't know if we can fit everybody on here at the same time. Uh, Tori and Pat, which we were at the um, at the Island Animal, and uh, Ryan Morin at uh, Elena, was Elena's Ale House. And uh, Colin Bennett of the Malted Bali and Crystal Tory of SoFi Cycle. Uh, let's bring on who we can, and we're going to spend the time to make sure everybody gets a chance to introduce themselves and to uh, give a little backdrop on, you know, the current situations in their business. So let's start with Senan. Senan, haven't seen you in a while. Uh, and uh, oh, how are you? We don't get to go to see the URI game, so I don't get to sit with you, you know, in front of your family and behind your family. So the world has changed. Uh, why don't you just share your, you know, for a couple of minutes, your business and the impact that the uh, the COVID has had on that, and then some of your thoughts regarding yeah. what, what we could be doing right now to help these small businesses. And thank you for being here. Thanks, thank you, Governor. Um, you know, that was one thing I was going to say was uh, we uh, we're, we're facing uh, Wisconsin on Wednesday. What a game that's going to be! Yes. But, uh, oh yeah. Going, you know, for for Gerbs, it was a it was an immediate struggle for us to uh, supply chain wise. You know, we're buying goods from all over uh, the world, uh, so it, it 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 became incredibly challenging. The the channels dried up fast. Uh, um, things that we bought every day were just unavailable. Um, and then as things progressed, you know, because Gerbs is 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 uh, an e commerce business, we were in position to. Uh, really it's 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 hard the, the right words to use when when seeing the stories that are out there from small businesses in Rhode Island but Gerbs was hit the opposite you know our our business has has really boomed uh at the peak we were 600 percent uh from the previous year because you know all of America is going online right now to to purchase uh to to goods so you know what what my brother and I are we're advocates uh, we're advocates for small business and restaurants, uh, food trucks, caterers in, in Rhode Island. Um, we try to uh, support them on a daily basis. Uh, we try to just put up messages because they're the ones that that need our help. They're the ones that need our support right now um, because it's going to get really hard as these months go go down after this uh, this pause. 
Yeah, so Senan, I want to thank you for that. And, and then this is a good moment to encourage all the small businesses to go to rismallbusiness.org and register your business as part of a statewide coalition of small businesses. That's what's given me a little bit more authority in, in my conversations. The larger that uh, small business coalition grows, uh, the better I, you know, better chance I have of being listened to both in the media and also with our with our state officials. So, you know, go and join that coalition, rismallbusiness.org. And then also the, um, the, you know, the advocacy not only is today because of the circumstances of the COVID um, center, but it's also going to be beyond when vaccinations are out, you right. The, the, uh, as, and the, uh, you know, the, that's happening. Uh, the vaccines are available because this is going to be a long-term process to get back to, uh, you know, the economy back. So this is, I'm prepared to, you know, continue these, these discussions, you know, for the time I'm in office uh, and, uh, and hopefully we continue to use that coalition to advocate for our small businesses in the state. So Senator, thank you for being here. I think we got ta uh, uh, Tori and, and, and um, is it P.O.? Yes, P.O. Yes. P.O., thank you. So introduce yourself and your business is on Island Animal. And, uh, you know, uh, share that and then share what difficulties uh, and challenges you're, you're having right now and some of the, your thoughts in terms of how to address those challenges. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having us and thank you for doing this. Um, actually, we've had some of the same things that you had, um, the supply chains and people. I didn't hear everything because we had people coming in. Yeah. Um, but Tell us a little quickly about your business story. We are a pet supply store. We focus on health and nutrition. Um, we educate people and things. We help them with all kinds of issues. Try to keep. And them where's your business located, Tori? On Narragansett Avenue in Jamestown. Great. Thank you for being here. We've been in business now. This is our twelfth year. We started in two thousand eight uh, at another location, and then we kind of expanded here. When this was renovated, a little bit more space, a little bigger, uh, more on the strip, so to speak. Um, so we came to this location uh, three years ago when it was renovated, and we've been here for three years. It's been good up until obviously this this year. You know. Have you been able to do the Restore Rhode Island grants at all? No, sir. No, not not at all. Oh, we tried. Well, we weren't eligible for one of the loans. We tried for. The first or second round, I, actually, I believe it was the second round of, of loans. I tried, we tried for a loan. And so these are the grants. These are the grants, the Restore Rhode Island grants. And we're finding too many businesses have not applied for that. You, you're going to qualify. Uh, and we, our office needs to get back to, in touch with you to, to help, help coach you through that because you're going to qualify for that. for that. We got a confirmation for that grant now. But well, we, you do. Okay. We, yeah, we have that we applied. Yeah. yeah. We applied for one of the second round of loans and we didn't qualify for any loans. So we haven't had any help um, up until now. I just applied for a grant for us uh, to see if we can get some help. Uh, and that's the Restore Rhode Island grant? Yes, sir. You know? It is. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So keep us posted on that. You know, the deadline is nine o'clock tonight on those applications for anybody's listening. We just issued a letter to the, the governor today to extend that to December 15th so that, uh, you know, businesses like yours that, have not, you know, applied or just, uh, you know, haven't known about it. They can know about it and 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 get get some of those funds in. So, you know, we'll be publishing that letter publicly uh, so that businesses that are like yours and others can be advocating with their general assembly members and their local elects to, uh, you know, follow the lead. And a lot of the things in the letter that I've sent to the governor today came from the coalition discussions from the coalition uh, yesterday morning at eleven o'clock. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Thank thanks for, for sharing. Us. We're here to yep. learn a lot. We're here to learn as much as we possibly can. And a, a lot of the businesses on the strip here, uh, I don't I'm, I don't know if you all you guys or gentlemen are familiar with uh, Narragansett Avenue, which is basically the strip in Jamestown. We had a great, you know, pretty much a you know pretty good thriving economy here. A lot of great restaurants. And uh, I think we had like a dozen restaurants. We're down to two. Yeah. Is the so, slice of heaven on that street with you? Yeah, that's the only restaurant right open now. Uh, yeah, yeah, so, twenty-two. That's, that's yeah, it. I did the, uh, that was one of the thirty-nine visits. I did that tour there and visited with um, yes, probably ten or fifteen businesses there. And 
It doesn't matter whether you're a small business in Jamestown or south side of Providence or on Broad Street in Cumberland. We're all facing the same things. Yeah. Right. All right. So, so, yeah. So stay in touch. And I appreciate you being on. Steve, Steve Capizone, you know, Steve, I, you know, I have to kind of little, put a clarifier in here. I've known Steve for many years and we've been in the health, we were in the health club business for 30 plus years. And, and Steve uh, and it was part of a management team that helped manage our club for, uh, for a handful of those years. So Steve, tell us what's going on in the health, health club business. Steve Capizone. Hey, Are you on? Yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm yeah, yeah, you're buffering a little bit, Steve. I'm gonna come back to you, all right? Because uh, we'll 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 have plenty of time. Let's go to uh, Ryan, right? Ryan, tell us about the business and what's going on with you. Hi, how are you? Good, uh, Ryan. Thanks for being here. That, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Uh, so I own uh, with my business partner Chris Elena's Ale House. We're a, an Irish pub situated on the Beaver River Golf Course in the sticks of Richmond here. Um, and we also uh, at the start of the pandemic, opened a coffee shop called Elena's Coffee and Kitchen, which um, has been a lot of fun, but also a struggle. So we, we signed the lease on that space uh, at, towards the end of February and had anticipated an April 1 open, uh, which obviously was difficult to do when basically the world shut down on March 17th. So yes. um, we delayed the opening the best we could um, until the you know bills kind of piled up a little bit and we decided to uh, convert the face of our coffee shop into a takeout window, much like you would at an ice cream parlor. And we, we launched in the beginning of May. Um, but now, as it's cold, right, and, and it's a small little cafe, uh, at 33%, you can have five people in there. Um, and no one wants to stand outside in the, the takeout window. So um, being that the business did not establish last year, uh, Restore RI grants, things like that, are unavailable to a newer business like that. So to my knowledge so far, right? I don't yeah, know so Ryan, a couple things. One is I think I visited that shop, right? Where you're, you're located, at, tell us where you're located, in the Charlestown area? Where, where no, was it's I? right yeah. on Route 138 in Richmond. Richmond, yeah, I visited there. And, um, uh, but anyways, right now, businesses uh, up till nine o'clock tonight, and we're gonna try to get that extended to December 15th. That's what we asked the governor today to extend it. Businesses that opened up in 2020, are allowed to uh, to qualify for Restore Rhode Island grants right now. Okay. So I, it's worth thousands of dollars to you. So hopefully you're going to get back into the mix and our office will be able to help you out there. All right? Okay. Okay. Awesome. So let's uh, thank you for being here. Appreciate My it. Pleasure. Thank you. Senator Miller, are you still standing by? Yes, I am. Well, thank you for your leadership, not only uh, from as a, a senator, but also as a as a small business owner with the, with restaurants. Please, you know, fill us in on what you know, what you're seeing and what uh, what needs to be done, uh, and what's of you know what what the possibilities are for us, senator. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you for your leadership. Yeah, I'm sorry I have to get on another call, but what I've seen, you know, I have a business downtown Providence, and so what I'm seeing is that. Too many people are not apply, applying for these grants. I know somebody that surveyed a bunch of businesses downtown and about half hadn't applied for the pause grant through the division of taxation or the restore RI. And I think it's really important that people apply for these. Um, and like, I think it was the restore one that went from a maximum of 15,000 to them doubling that. And for, um, I think what you might see, I think everybody should apply if they're not applying because they think they're not big enough to have an impact, they should still apply based on the example of the restorer that doubled. Um, it's very plausible that as we get closer to the deadlines for them to spend some of this money, that the amounts could be expanded. And so I think it's crucial that businesses apply um, no matter how they feel about whether the scale of the, of the grants or loans um, will have the adequate impact on them. Yes, Senator, I think that's so important. And that's one of the reasons that we have sent a letter to, um, to the governor today to extend the Restore Rhode Island to December 15th for the very reasons you just said. Many businesses, uh, including uh, Ryan's, right, uh, which he just mentioned, 
uh, we're aware that new businesses that open up in 2020 can qualify right now for the for the Restore Rhode Island grant. So I know that Senator De Palma, who's listening in on the call here too, is you know going to try to drum up support with his with his colleagues, uh, you yeah. know, for to address all these requests that are coming primarily from the small business community. And I'm translating it back into the governor's office because right now the governor is making these decisions. So, um, you know, I think you heard one of the things is that pool the unused dollars that were allocated for the businesses into the Restore Rhode Island so they can just do it exactly what you just said, uh, yeah. which is increase the amount from 30000 to more than 30000 uh, yeah. for these small businesses and get that done by Christmas or, you know, before the New Year's. Yeah, and the one process through division of taxation, the same thing could plausibly happen. So a lot of people are frustrated to say, I'm not going to bother. It's not big enough to have an yeah, impact and, and, on my business. And and then there are others that just aren't aware of them. And so I think uh, people have to get online. The, the division of taxation one, it took me 10 minutes on my phone to fill out that one. Um it's really and that, that qualifies you up to fifty thousand dollars on that one, right? Yes. The pause one, right? And then the other, and yeah, the restaurant the shutdown one, one got, can get you up to ten thousand dollars, right? Right. So mm. it's really important that people um, become aware, and uh, no matter how frustrated they are by the impact or how long it might take for them to be funded, they have to go in and apply. I think it's critical. That's a strong message, Senator. Thank you for delivering yeah. that. And hopefully, yeah. you know, today we're going to get a handful of people more to, to apply. And and also, yeah. if we can get the extension this year, we should be able to extend this to December fifteenth at the very, you know, you know, the, you know, the further state out, potentially even further than that. If in fact we put more of the dollars in that are unused at the moment, uh, and and then facilitate a second and third check to the businesses that have already received the check. That can happen very, very quick, uh, and we can put millions of dollars more into the pockets of our small businesses, uh, including our restaurants and beyond our restaurants. So, Senator, thank you so much for your leadership. Ben, do you have a? It looks like Ben wants to say something. Ben, do you have a question? Uh, I don't actually. I have Steve on the phone because he can't. Uh, he, he's having okay. trouble getting in, um, but well, I'm not sure if you'll be able to hear him. Well, let's try Steve, and then if we can't, we'll, I, do we have other businesses that are waiting to get on, or are we? No, this is this is it for today. Uh, okay, good. All right, let's go to Steve, and then I'll give everybody another chance to weigh in if something is occurring to them or a question that they might have. Let's try Steve. Yeah. Steve, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? I can hear you well enough. Thank you so much for being here, Steve. Hey, thanks for having me on. Uh, I really appreciate it. I appreciate the opportunity to get on the phone with uh, other small businesses. Uh, I unfortunately didn't hear a lot because of the, the sound was jumbled. So um, I think I heard you say that there was a, a check that's going to be coming in the mail tomorrow. Is that? Is <laughs> yeah, we're all hopeful of that. Uh, but but you, I, I pointed out, you know, uh, Senator Miller was just um, saying that many businesses don't know about the grants that are available. Uh, and I know you and I had a conversation just about 10 days ago, maybe a little before then, about the Restore Rhode Island. Uh, but uh, And I'm not sure where the status is there, but you got you got three businesses in Rhode Island, physically in Rhode Island, paying taxes, employing people in Rhode Island. Uh, were you able to qualify for the Restore Rhode Island grant, Steve? Uh, we we have been in the process of uh, getting our application in. Unfortunately, my uh, CFO um, has been out sick, so um, I've got someone else on it, and we're actually trying to connect with Cheyenne today um, just to make sure that we get everything in that we need to get in. So I uh, appreciate that, and we're, we're hopeful that we can uh, you know, qualify for funds that will help us. Uh, we're, we're in a tough situation. I didn't get a chance to hear um, the others speak, but I did hear Chris Parisi, I believe. I think he summed up excellently what's going on in the fitness industry. You know, we're, we're getting devastated. Uh, we've been in business 40 years in Rhode Island, as you know, and, uh, you know, we've just had to go through some additional painful furloughs. Not, not the best time of the year to do that. Uh, through the past eight months, we've only been able to get back up to about 40 to 45% of our normal 
visits because of the fear. So it's having, this is having, uh, this second shutdown here has been very, very painful for us. And you know, we're hoping that we can get some support. Um, you know, just a side note, based on, you know, the data, we're, we're frustrated. We're frustrated that we're being shut down when health clubs are not part of the problem. And, um, but, you know, we understand the seriousness of this and, and we applaud the desire to safeguard, but uh, we're, we're getting creamed and we really need some help. So, uh, looking forward to getting that application in and, and, uh, hopefully we can see some funds out of this and hopefully we'll be open next week. And this shutdown is only, uh, two weeks and it doesn't go any further. So Dan, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what else the others said, so I don't know. No, I think that you you really nailed down some very important pieces. One is we need to make sure you get those applications in before 9 o'clock tonight because that's when the application process currently is, uh, you know, set to to expire. Uh, And that's why our office has put a a letter to the governor uh, before 9 o'clock tonight to see whether they can extend that to December 15th for these businesses. The other point that you made I think is a really important one, Steve, is that we need, uh, you know, everybody to be following the rules. I know you are in your health club, and I know the health clubs that I visited, and I have disclosed that that was uh, our business for 30-plus years, uh, and, and Steve and his, and, and his company actually managed our club for, for a handful of those years. So I know, the, I know the work. I know what's going on, and we really need to make sure that if, uh, you know, that this pause uh, is, is um, you know, specific in terms of its in terms of making sure that the businesses that are being impacted are in fact the ones that are contributing to this virus rate. And if we can show that they're not, then we need to make sure that these businesses can have a chance to, to continue to operate. So I think those are the two points, get the money into the pockets of the businesses and then try to uh, you know establish this, this pause as being a short term strategy uh, as long as the, the businesses are following the rules as Liz pointed out that the majority of the of the businesses are following the rules. So, Steve, thank you for being here. I don't know whether I'll just go around real quickly to Senan if he has any thoughts you or know, comments he wants to share. Uh, you know, Governor, I, what, I, I mean, I want to reiterate the frustration that I see from colleagues that, that call us and just say, you know, the small business the restaurants, they're the ones following the rules. That, that's what I, I personally see. And I understand their frustration um, you know, outside of these two grants, and I just heard about it uh, yesterday, and I shared it on our, our social media pages for people to get out there and uh, to apply. Um, you know, past that, you know, I, I think people, you know, reach out to the Rhode Island Small Business Development Center, uh, their website. You know, you can you can use their contact page, sign up, um, get more assistance from them. Um, I just, I, you know, I just want to be an advocate to to continue to to help. Uh, help businesses by just so showing some support. Um, I don't know any other way <laughs> that I can do to help because I know how hard this is right now. Yeah, so we'll get the information if you if you have the time to uh, have you know come on to one of those eleven o'clock calls on Monday. There's a, you can join a core group of businesses that feel the same way as you do, Senator. And we need to build that you know that that voice. We need to increase the you know the the, the how loud that voice is. So. Um, yeah, thanks for being here. Uh, Tori, uh, uh, do you have any anything that you wanted to add as you're thinking on or any questions as we kind of get prepared to sign off here? Well, I've had, actually had a Good. few ideas. Share um, them. I, I was really frustrated for years and years, all these people coming in and saying, can you beat Chewy's prices? And I would say, well, we already do. And they would say, oh, but you charge sales tax. And my thoughts are that maybe we could raise the sales tax on out-of-state online businesses and reduce the sales tax within the state to encourage people to shop within Rhode Island. And maybe to help balance that out, put just a 3% sales tax on wine and alcohol. And maybe on boats, because that's really a luxury. Or yeah, so a those are long-term off. conversations, Dory, that I, you know, I think that we're trying to open up in terms of a number of things to level the playing field. But I appreciate you sharing. Those are the type of things the coalition are talking about, you know, as we, you know, move out of this uh, pandemic. 
Uh, and also, there are some states, I'm going to tell you in terms of the tax strategy, there are some states that have delayed the, the payments for, our, for businesses. There are some states that have actually toned down some of, the, some of those overhead expenses. That's something for Senator De Palma, who's listening in, and, and, uh, and Senator Miller to explore. But there are some states, there are some local communities in Rhode Island in particular that have taken some of their licensing fees and they've, and they've reduced those like Warren by 25% on their liquor license. We know that there are other communities that have expanded their, their licensing over a 12 month time frame payment one every, once every month for 12 months as opposed to having all the cash at one time. So you're not off target to be thinking that way. And so I think that, you know, and I would send the deliver the message to people who are listening to this, is there any idea at this point in time, in particular, if you find where another state is doing something that's in our marketplace that is helping small businesses that uh, we, we currently are not considering, that's going to be very valuable information. So if you hear anything like that, please share it with us. But I appreciate you your thinking I about actually, it. I'm sorry to interrupt. Um, I did think maybe we didn't have to pay the inventory tax at the end of the year this year. Yeah. We, you get the, the tax when we sell this stuff, and then we get penalized. And this year, we're all going to have leftover stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so I think those are things that we really should be taking a look at, everything that should be on the table. Uh, you know, and, of course, when we run businesses the way we do, we know we got to – we got to balance the, the expense with the with the income. So if we reduce the income, we got to figure out how to balance the expense. So anytime you take a dollar away from the current budgets, but that doesn't mean that we shouldn't be having that conversation because maybe there is a way to kind of achieve what you're talking about. Uh, but clearly, we got to keep our small businesses in business. Ryan, any thoughts? Are you going to apply for those dollars? That's what I want to know. I'm most certainly. Yeah, yeah. That's what Senator Miller yeah, wants I to know. <laughs> I will apply as soon as we get off this. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, yeah, I just remain hopeful that this uh, pause is as brief as, as advertised. Um, we had the luxury in the spring and summer of having a, a, an enormous back lawn here at the Ale House. Um, outdoor dining suited us well, um, but as we get into these 30 and 40 degree days, there's no amount of propane heaters dedicated to each table that's really going to make for a comfortable and enjoyable meal. So um, our interior is yeah. very small. 33% of that with no bar is five tables. Um, and, and we grew over the summer to a staff of about 35. So it's, it's things are very, very lean right now. Um, so the best, you know, we're having success with takeout and, and doing a lot of local business to business uh, support, making some friends locally. So just making sure that our neighbors are well taken care of creating kind of a community environment uh, from my business and other surrounding restaurants where right now we have this takeout promo where you get entered into a raffle. And in that night, if your receipt is pulled, you win a $25 gift certificate to a neighboring business, just trying our best to, to, you know, keep it local, help our friends, help our neighbors and, and create a little bit of a, a supportive environment for the folks down here. Yeah. Thanks, Ryan. Something that I hope will work for the winter, but we're looking forward to spring. Yeah. Well, we all are there, but we got to make sure that we're doing everything we can to make sure our businesses uh, can, can survive this, this time frame. And, and I think you pointed out a very important thing as we signal off, let's shop local, let's support our local, local businesses. Let's make an effort to do that. Um, you know, uh, even more than we normally do. This is the time to buy the gift certificate at Ryan's place or, or buy the, uh, the the pet products at Tori's place, right? Or, you know, be supportive as sending as of other businesses that are, you know, struggling right now and the businesses that are doing uh, okay and doing well and holding their own or even increasing their business footprint. This is the time for them to really reach out and do, do business with their local, uh, you know, local community small businesses. So thank you everybody for being on today. We appreciate each and every one of you and we'll keep the work going. Thank you. Thank you so much. See you later. Yep. Thank you. And, you know, we're going to sign off. We want a little overtime today, but these small businesses need an opportunity to tell this story and we've given it to them. And also you're hearing that many of them don't know about the grants. Uh, you know, two of them on the call today just recently learned about it or just learned about it on the call. Uh, so there's millions and millions of dollars that are available. Uh, we need to extend the deadline from, from tonight to December 15th at the very, you know, the very least or even deeper into the month, uh, bring those dollars that are unused 
whether it's in the job training program, which the $45 million was appropriated for job training, or whether it's in the other programs that are, you know, have uh, funds that are, have not been expended, roll them in, get them out to the businesses as quick as we can. So thank you, everybody, for being here. Let's stay safe. Let's wear our masks. The message is wear our masks. Uh, let's save lives. And let's save our jobs. And let's save our small businesses. And one of the ways you can do that is to really double down and shop local shop local this holiday season. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow night on our community conversation at seven o'clock.